then I'm gonna walk, walk along, along the streets of gold. Well, 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 I'm gonna walk, I walk them golden stairs, for I know my Jesus answers all of my prayers. Well, I know when he calls me to my home on high, I'll walk them golden stairs when I die. But serving him has been such a thrill I have never seen the gates to that city But one day, one day Recalling ways we lost 
the struggle, the promises we never kept. Oh, but there's hope. Let me encourage you with a plan that works for me. I speak the cross, the blood of Jesus, and that accuser has to flee. Starting trouble. What are you picking on Johnny for? What are you picking on poor old Johnny? Yeah, Johnny ain't never rocked the boat, picked on anybody. Amen. Let's take a vote. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, OHBC Seniors Group will be meeting this Tuesday, correct? That's this Tuesday. This Tuesday at 6:15 at BMAX. At BMAX. Anybody like to come, please do be part of that. Um, all are welcome. If, uh, if you have any questions, see Miss Tiny or Brother Ronnie. Also, the OHBC fundraiser, um, for those of you that have um, great recipes, please get those filled out. Where's the deadline? The deadline, it doesn't show me a deadline. I think they're going to keep it open until they get what they need and then put the book together. Um, also, we're going to be honoring our seniors on May the 7th in two weeks, so be in prayer about that. Um, the, um, I got some new stuff on my paper here. I'm, I'm not sure who wrote it. Did you write something new on my paper? Okay. It says um, Saturday, May 13th from 9.30 to 11.30 is a Mother's Day brunch. Who put that on my... Ah. Okay. A Mother's Day brunch. Saturday, May 13th, a Mother's Day brunch from 9.30 to 11.30. And Wednesday, May the 24th, a back-to-school bash uh, with waters and slides. Where is she at? It ain't back-to-school, it's out-of-school. Back-to-school. I'm glad she messed up. Because she don't mess up very often. I think, that's, I think that would mean end of school bash. Water and slides, May the 24th here at the church. Andy's home all the time. Yeah, yeah, Andy's home. Andy's in the way. Um, but looking forward to that. Um, we've got four seniors. Um, 
oddly enough, three of the four seniors are from Charlton County. Three of the four seniors from Charlton County. Breck Allen is over at um, Southside, Southside Church. I, that's correct. Correct? I think Brett's at Southside. A vacation Bible school coming up July 16th through the 20th. Looking forward for a great vacation Bible school this year. Uh, VBS sign-up sheets. This is the last. You have to get them this month, correct, Miss Shue? Um, so make sure you get your VBS T-shirts, your sizes, pick your envelope up, envelope up, put your money in the envelope, and turn it in. There's a little slot on the secretary's door. Just drop it in that slot and have your shirts paid for. The uh, men's prayer breakfast, May 13th at Sand Hill Baptist Church. Who speaks at that this time? Coach? Who speaks at the Sand Hill breakfast? I'll have to look. Okay. If it's me, let me know. <laughs> Before we get there. I mean, I mean, it's an in-season, out-of-season, but... Um, it's at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Probably me. It's either you or somebody you've been. Oh. Okay, then. Uh, Dor, did you just say Brother Mike or Brother Justin or Brother Mac? I don't know. We'll see. But somebody wants to. Somebody wants to. Um, that'd be great. Um, also, any adult interested in going to the Fall Jubilee in Gatlinburg, please let us know. Um, the uh, dates are the 25th of September through the 27th. I think that's Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, three days and two nights. Um, I think you need to get on the list for that. They probably line up the hotel rooms as well. Um, also, this this sitting on here. Um, um, you might know Randy Dixon. I know Randy Dixon. Is he a preacher? He's a preacher, correct? Does he have a church? Wrong, Randy Dixon. Okay. There's a camp meeting. I just heard about Friday. On that side, that side of the county, maybe toward Dixie Union over there. I think you guys, I think you said the pastor's name was Randy Dixon. I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, there's a camp meeting. And it's, it's, it's kind of old time. You know, they, they, they come, I think it starts like on a Thursday. And they go all day Thursday, all day Friday, all day Saturday. It goes into church on Sunday. So um, maybe we can get involved and get in some of that. And if we can't do it during the days, we might go at night. But they'll have different preachers preaching throughout the days and the evenings and things like that. But um, I'd like for us to get involved in some more of these. There's a, there's a brother that lives up around Pigeon Forge. It's a friend of mine um, who wants me to come and speak at theirs coming up here in, in this year. And I'd like for several of us to go if, if people would like to go up there for preaching, you know, and maybe we spend some time. They have them here. having have them at Swamp Road all the time. Swamp Road's all the time having a, a, um, a, a meeting like that, so the camp meetings. So um, I'd like to see it, so maybe at some point in the future we might have a camp meeting. We might have something here at our church, maybe a Saturday-Sunday thing. Um, to where people come in and preach throughout the day on Saturday. People come at different times. You, you can't come all the time. And the thing about it is if you set it at a certain time, you, people might not come at that time, but they might come in the mornings. There's breakfast here at the church. There'll be different things done. Um, Y'all just be in prayer about that. It, probably not this year, thing, but maybe over the next year or two, it's something we might can work towards. I think it's, I think it's a good opportunity. Um, have somebody for youth, have somebody speaking for something for our children's ministries, different things like that throughout the days. I think it'd be a good, a good idea. Um, any other announcements? Softball teams, I think they got their meetings nailed down today. Pretty good. Uh, I heard we're going to have, have two, two softball teams. Two softball teams. That's a blessing to have enough people to put up two ball teams. That'd be fun. Um, are there any prayer requests we need to add to our list? Y'all glad to be at church? Amen. Amen. Well, I am. I'm glad to be back. I'm going to be in Colossians tonight after we sing. So if you want to get your Bible and turn there uh, in just a little bit, but I'll be over in Colossians. Um, are there any prayer requests, any unspoken, anything like that? Any unspoken? Amen. Ones we added today, Miss Kay, uh, Randy and Cindy Conley, Miss Betty May, Chris Pothwell, and David Mitchells. David Mitchells. Uh, say it again. Oh, Aunt Jean. My Aunt Jean. Aunt Jean Murray. Is she different? Same? Yeah. Yeah. Any others? Let's pray for these prayer requests. Lord, thank you for these prayer requests and the people that brought them. Uh, Lord, 
people all the time say, thank you for praying. So, Lord, let us not grow weary in that. Lord, as we lift up folks, we pray for Brother Tony and Lord and um, Miss Rachel as they're down there in Green Cove. She's probably getting ready to come home this afternoon. Lord, I pray his, his stay is, is, um, is fruitful. I pray he get, he's stronger coming out of there than he was going in. And I pray, God, that as he's learning to do some things for himself, now, oh God, he gets stronger. I pray that infection gets removed out of his hip. And, God, he's able to come home whole and be able to be okay. And just pray you'll be beside him now and his dear wife. Lord, help us as a church. Come along beside them. Help meet needs for them. Just pray, Lord, you'll bless us to, to be able to bless them. We pray for all the prayer requests. There's so many. Um, um, Miss Betty May, uh, Brother Ricky brought her name up again this morning. I just pray, God, you'll bless her. There's so many as we look at our list. And to those that aren't mentioned, there's people in our area that are, that are, that are lost, that are sin sick. God, I pray that you reach down and touch each one of those as well. And we lift these up to you, Lord, knowing that you know what to extent that um, they're going to be healed and you know the end result and all this. But God, but let, help us to be, to be uh, fervent in prayer, to not grow weary in it, to be constant in lifting each other up, knowing, God, that you love us and that you care for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Since things are losing and life-giving flow, there's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? 
go beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Yeah. Really? <clears throat> Look with me in the book of Colossians. Um, uh, about verse 9. About verse 9. Um, when a person looks at the book of Colossians, it's one of those books that um, it's, it's, it's given some, some be, carefuls, be careful ofs and, and some things like that. It's, it's, it's Paul sending a letter to a group of people at Coloss that, um, that they're getting carried away with, with other types of religions. Um, and it's, listen, it's not hard in today's society for people to get caught up in things that they think are okay because they hear it, they hear it said all the time. It's not uncommon for people to, to begin to believe that, that um, <clears throat> there's other ways to heaven. It's not uncommon for people to start believing those ways when it makes it easier. When people say, well, if there's other ways to heaven, then I don't have to be, I don't have to be holy. If there's other ways to heaven, then, then you know, I, I never, I never was a big, big uh, promise keeper. The, the, the movement that came out, and I, I didn't have any reason except for the fact that when it came out, it was bringing all these religions together. I mean, the, from people that were, that were even, even, even Muslims, uh, looking at that, um, Mormons, um, Jehovah's Witness, all these people were coming together um, under the idea of one God. Um, there is one God, but I'm not sure we're all serving the same God. And it's hard for me to say it's okay, uh, because I'm going to tell you something. Um, wrong doctrine always leads to wrong living. Amen. Uh, wrong doctrine always leads to wrong living. So you can say, well, um, well what I believe is we, we, can, we can live like this, or, or we, can, we can do this, you know, where, where I believe. I got, I got a friend of mine who... Uh, who, who uh, does a lot. Let me put it Does a lot of things that I don't think God would be very, very proud of, but he, he he disguises it under the title of his doctrine or his church. You know, it's he says, "Well, our church does that. That's we're okay with that. That's just what our church does." And I, I'm like, "Well, you know, how, how does that honor God? You know, how how, do, how can you how can you how can you marry that to to God? You, do you think Jesus ever did those things? If you think Christ ever thought that was okay?" Listen, you, you, you do these things and in and, and one breath um, talk about these things and how great they are. In the other breath, talk about God. I said, man, those things just don't, they just don't jive. But wrong doctrine will always lead to wrong living. Uh, people that, that if you begin to believe things other than what God's word states, if you, if you get outside God's word to find answers to life, you're going to get outside God's fence about how you're supposed to live that life. Because God's word is very clear, very plain. And, you know, I, I, I'm always amazed. People say, well, well, you know, well, the Bible says this or the Bible says that. The Bible's very plain about how we ought to live. We ought to be like Jesus. Now, whether you want to talk about people's uh, drinking or smoking or, or gambling or whatever they do, whatever happens in people's lives that, that, that you might say, well, that's not very Christ-like. Whatever, whatever happens, the people's attitudes, the way they... The way they hurt people with what they say, just the, the way that they live, the way that they don't honor God with their, with their time, their talent, or time, just whatever things they are. Uh, be careful because you might be one that gets lenient on those things in the future just to keep friends. 
and to have friendship with other people. I, I know a lot of folks today that aren't hard on anything because they're afraid they're going to hurt people's feelings. And I don't talk about being hard uh, and, and, and knocking people in the head with it. I'm just saying standing on some things and saying, this is what I am. This is what I am. You, you can do whatever you want to do, but this is how I do it. This is, this is the way that I'm going to live my life. A lot of people are afraid to do that today because the opposition, the devil's crowd is very loud. You know, they're, they're loud. And, and used to, that, that group was silent, you know, but not, not so much anymore. Um, that, listen, when we go to the library on May 1st, there's probably going to be some loud people there. There's probably going to be some loud opposition. And I'm not going to be surprised if they fill up all the seats in that library with lost people before there's room to sit the rest of us. So don't be shocked if some of us go up there at 9 o'clock in the morning and order a pizza. Just stay there. But I, I think it's important that we go and, and, and say, this, this is the, this, just ring the bell. Just ring the bell. Because that's the way we live. And that's the way we think our community ought to live. I'm not trying to push it on anybody, but I sure don't want somebody telling, telling a, a, a four-year-old child, trying to let them, trying to decide for them, because listen, young people will make wrong decisions. They're just kids. They, they have to be taught. That's why they got a mom and a daddy. They have to be showed. They have to be given direction. The people in Coloss, Brother Ed, were a lot like that. Now, these weren't Jewish people, the people in Coloss. Um, the only reason that Coloss is even mentioned in Scripture, it probably would have fell off the pages of history, was because of the church that was there. That's it. Um, I, don't know, I don't know that uh, you might correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong right here, but I, I say that a lot because I'm wrong a lot. But I'm not sure that Paul ever went to Coloss. I think he went to Ephesus, and I think he went to the areas around Ephesus, and Coloss was kind of in between there. Um, you know, uh, Coloss was the was to Ephesus like Folkestone was to Waycross. You know, it was, it was close enough to hear what's going on over there. So we and folks to know what's happening in Waycross, or we and folks to know what's going on in Jacksonville, because we get Jacksonville news. They don't have Folkestone news. You folks in Folkestone, we know what's going on in Jacksonville for whatever reason. My wife will watch the news down in Jacksonville and be mad. It ain't got to do with us. You know, it, it's in Jacksonville. Uh, so... The same way with the people in Colossus. Now, the people in Colossus weren't Jewish. They were mostly Gentiles. Uh, they were people that were, that were outside the original faith, if you will. But these were a group of people that were starting to be, they were starting to, other religions were starting to leak into Colossus. Uh, you know, they, were, they, were, they, were, they didn't have a, uh, I think Philemon, uh, you might see it somewhere. I think Philemon may be one of them that, that, that spoke in Colossus or maybe had a testimony in Colossus. But the word of God grew in Coloss without any great work happening there. We have a book there because Paul decided to pen a gospel to the people in Colossians. Maybe you can tell me if he went there. Maybe he did. I, I don't know. I hadn't looked that up. But the simple fact is, can I tell you, God's word can take root anywhere. Right. You know, when I think about these people in Coloss, Brother Mike, uh, had it not been for the church, we would never heard about them. But because the church was doing so well there, Paul thought it important to send them a letter to keep them straight, to, to get them on the right road. I think that happens all These letters are sent to us. These letters are, 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 are protected, and we have Scripture to keep us on that straight and narrow. It's, it's so that we know. It's so that we know what God intended for us in Scripture and how we ought to live our lives. It's important that we read all of these. It's important that we know about Obadiah, like we studied this past week. It's important that we know about Colossus, Philemon, Onesimus. You know, it's important that we know about all these people because they construct Scripture and it teaches us our doctrine. It teaches us what we feel like God says is right and what's wrong. Now, God, uh, Paul is telling the people in Colossus, be careful about these other doctrines that you're hearing. The Gnostics, they, uh, one, one thing that was coming into being um, uh, asceticism. It's a A S C E T I S asceticism. I can't spell it, but if I could write it, I could spell it. But asceticism. It was a. It was that idea that they could reach some spiritual perfection, and that um, they could be higher than the regular Christians. Not not Gnosticism, but uh, but but asceticism. They had this idea that they could be more perfect than just regular Christians. Listen. We ought not to think that's so strange. We got doctrines now that think that if we don't do it like them, then they're better than us. We, we got people now that think if, 
if you don't do this, then well, that's God. You're not part of that remnant. We're just the only ones going. There's going to be a lot of folk in heaven surprised when us Baptist folk roll in there, ain't they? Yeah. When us regular old Baptist people go in there uh, into heaven, uh, loud and proud, amen, without a bun, y'all right? Without a skirt, you still okay? There's going to be a lot of folk that's going to be upset when the Baptist crowd roll into town. I, and the thing about it is, is we, 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 we love people that, that believe different than we do because I don't believe it loses or saves you. The problem is, is a lot of times folks that believe so stringently about how things ought to be done think that we're lost. I, I've had people tell me because, they did, because I never spoke in tongues, I've never received the power of the Holy Spirit. I said, wow. I said, the Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit's got a lot of gifts he gives. Amen. Tongues isn't just only one. You know, uh, and so uh, it, it, well, if, uh, if people that are saved speak in tongues. Really, I've never spoken in tongues. Uh, my neighbor one time asked me that, and, and we was talking about that, and he said that saved people speak in tongues. I said, do you believe I'm saved? And he was an older gentleman. He was in his 70s. He said, yeah, I had him there because, listen, he knew I was a Christian. I knew he was a Christian. I just knew we believed different, and we just weren't exactly the same. But I believed he was going to heaven. He believed I was going to heaven. And I said, brother, I've never spoken in tongues before. He said, yeah. And, and, and I'll tell you, just for truth, he didn't stay at the church he was at. He went to a church that believed um, more in line with what God, God was teaching him. At 70 years old, God was still teaching him. And I look back and I'm, thankful, I'm saying, Lord, let me be that way. Let me not think I know it all and can still hear you speak to me when I'm 70, 75 years old that I've been wrong about something and I can change Lord, help me grow forever. Lord, let me not stay just like this. Because, listen, there's, if, if y'all know me like I know me, there's a lot of growth needs to take place right here. And, and I want to grow closer. I want to be more like Christ. So uh, Paul was telling the people in Coloss, listen, the only thing you need is Jesus. I mean, that's, that's what he's telling. He said, listen, you need Jesus. He, he begins this letter by talking about the greatness of God, the greatness of Christ. Not the greatness of themselves, because every religion that boasts that you can be greater always relies on that person getting the idea that they can be like God. Take a minute right there. And now, 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 who does that sound like? Satan himself. They all, it's always the idea, it's always the thought behind it, that you can be better and better and better, and then, and then reach some spiritual sainthood here walking on earth. Listen, listen, that's why I got a problem with the guys walking around in the gowns holding the big gold things with the big giant hats on and people bowing down and kissing their rings. I got a problem. Amen. Hey, I don't need a mediator. No. Uh, Jesus, just, I don't need anybody on this side as my mediator. The Bible says in the book of Peter that I am a priest. And, and, and so as, as we think about that, we better be very careful and not let those things come in. Listen, um, wrong doctrine always leads to wrong living. It always does. Make sure you keep the doctrine. Make sure you're learning things um, like we should. L look right here in verse 9. Um, it's been a while. I'm going to back up and read all this. I, I know. But I'm going to read all this because it's been a while. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at uh, Coloss, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you have heard before in the word of the, tr of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God and truth. So these people were fruitful. When they heard the gospel, they began putting it to work. They were Gentiles that heard the gospel. They began to serve God and honor God, and they bore fruit. Verse 7 says, As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. So we have Epaphras, we have Philemon, um, the slave Onesimus who, who left uh, uh, Philemon, I think. Uh, I think he might have had, had a word there. But verse 9 says, For this cause, verse 8 says, For also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now, they had heard that there was a group of people over there with their preacher 
was on fire and they was bearing fruit. And they began to pray for that group of people just like we would. Just like we would. I, I don't know about this, the Ashbury revival up there. It's kind of gone away. I, I don't know that anything that's happened there. I, I don't know of any work. But listen, while that was going on, you know, we, we was praying for them. Listen, there, there's a lot I don't know. There's a lot I don't know about it. But what I do know is there was people seeking after God. Were they doing it the right way? Well, what is the right way? I, I don't know. What I know, there's a group of folks seeking after God. And I'm always for that. Amen. You know, uh, I'm always after folks seeking after Christ. And if they was just one that was brought into the fold because of that whole thing. Well, what a deal. So we heard about it. We began to pray for it. We heard about Brother Chris McDaniel as he came and spoke at our wild game supper sometime back. We heard about his ministry. We had him come. We've been praying. For, I've been praying for him ever since. I was excited the other day when a fellow called me and, and said, hey, I prayed for you today. Man, that blessed my heart. I've been praying for a fellow for 20 years. He called me and asked me to come pray for him at his workplace this past week. His little girl's sick. He said, would you come here and pray with me? I said, I'll be there in the morning. Listen, and when I hugged his neck, I said, I've been praying for you for 20 years. And he backed up and looked at me and he hugged me again. Now, is he in church today? Probably not. But I prayed for him. Hey, I've, I've heard, I, listen, I think, there's, I think there's more work to do there. And I'm going to pray for him until he comes in. I'm just going to keep praying. Why? Because I believe there's fruit there. It's what Paul and his, and his followers were doing. They were hearing about these people and seeing what work could be done, and they were praying for that work. What, do, what kind of work are you praying for? Are you just praying for the ministry that you're doing, or are you praying for people's ministry that other folks are doing? Are, are we excited about the work that's going on in other places? See, I, I'm looking forward to this summer. Uh, I hope it's a, a joint process that whereby we meet uh, Brother Scott Hayes and his dear wife, they're meeting, they're, they're missionaries in, in Peru. Uh, we're going to meet them in June, and uh, some of us may go down there in the fall and, and, and see their ministry because I want to support it. I think as a church, we need our foreign missions. We're not the Southern Baptist Convention sending our monies in missions, so we need to find our world missionaries and our national missionaries and fund them ourselves. We need to make sure that we're reaching these people and putting funds in their hands, real dollars, so they can win people. They can win people where we can't. So we want, listen, we want to pray for them. We want to see their fruit. That's why I want to talk to Brother Scott. We want to see his fruit. I want to see what he's doing. I want to make sure that what they're doing and what they're teaching aligns with what we're doing and what we believe. I don't want to just send money to somebody hoping it kind of works itself out. I want to make sure they're talking about Jesus. So we're going to talk this summer. I'm looking forward to that relationship. I'm looking forward for maybe even the years to come as we send students down there to work down there in Peru and those mission trips. It'll change them. Listen, as we pray for them, as we, as we uh, do that work, it, it'll be good for all of us. Now, Paul was praying for these people. He says, he says, I do not cease to pray for you. In verse 9, verse 10 says, he said, I pray that, that you might walk worthy of the Lord into all pleasing, be, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power to all patience and longsuffering and joyfulness. Now, we, we preached on this about three or four weeks ago. But, but we talked about three things, being filled, being fruitful, and being fortified. And that's what he was praying for these people. He was praying that they'd be filled with the Holy Spirit, that they'd be fruitful, that they'd win souls. Whatever, whatever you think about your life, do you pray about being filled every day? Do you, do you pray that the Holy Spirit of God will fill you every day? People say, well, I got the Holy Spirit inside me, so I'm, I'm as filled as I'm going to be. Well, yeah, I, I, when a person gets saved, they, they, the Holy Spirit moves in. That's true. The only... The only thing I differ and say, you need to look at it in another direction, is there are times that the Holy Spirit has more of you. There's, there's times that you cooperate with the process that the Holy Spirit's trying to do in your life. There's times that, that you get involved with God and you open yourself up for the Holy Spirit to change you, to nurture you, to love on you, to show you how to love, to show you how to forgive, to show you how to be Christ-like. That those times will be in your life and you'll get more like Christ. So, so you, when a person gets saved, the Holy Spirit moves in. Holy Spirit lives in. But there'll be times that you allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. And there'll be times you won't. There'll be times in our life we, we kind of put our hand over the cup and say, Lord, I don't want no more. I, I, I don't, I, I, that's it for me. You know, it's, 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 it's something to see a Christian, you know, um, out of church, sad. And when they come back, it's like they realize what they've been missing 
these several months or, or, or years, however long they've been out of God's house. But when they come back, it can be brand new, just like it was. Why? Because they allow the Holy Spirit to work in their lives again. They allow the Spirit. Now, here's what he said. He said, we need you to be filled, fruitful, and fortified, meaning, meaning strengthened. Verse 11 says, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, and all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. Verse 12 goes on to say, giving thanks to the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. So listen, Paul's not talking about a future event. He's talking about an event that's happening right now, being translated, being, being, being because we're blood-washed, born again, children of the king, literally being saved now, being part of the kingdom. He said, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even, in the, even the forgiveness of sin. There's a reason why Paul said it this way is because folks were beginning to say in Coloss that there was other ways to be saved. There was other ways to be right. Jesus, I mean, if Paul nails it down here and says there's only one way to be forgiven. It's through the redemption of your sins, and that redemption only comes through Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, that's something we need to, we, 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 that needs to be part of our, you know, our opening statement to people if they ask us about being a Christian. We're talking about this month about being a witness and a testimony. Part of your testimony uh, needs to be that Christ has redeemed you. Christ has forgiven your sins. You stand in full view of the cross today because of the work that Christ did, nothing that you did. What was going on here in these days is folks were beginning to work for it, Brother Jeffrey. They was getting to work and they was holding themselves up above other members. They was making people believe that, that because they didn't do the things that they did, that they couldn't be as good as they were. Hey, that's still, that's still around. We, listen, we got folks in church, that, listen, it'd be in your Baptist church. Or they'll say, they see, they see somebody that, 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 that falls every now and then or is going through tough times or may not have the things that they have or, or the abilities or the wherewithal that they have. They'll look on them differently as if they're less. And that's not what Scripture teaches. Everybody should be the same. That's what I love about this church. Man, when everybody comes here, everybody's the same. I, I like that about this place. Everybody's the same. Verse 14, it said, Whom redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Now, Paul goes on to teach about the greatness of God. Listen, listen to these words, because these ought to be something you underline or pen and be able to go back to, because there's going to be folks that tell you that the world was this way or God, or, or God didn't create this or, or, or this, this happened this way. Listen, listen to what Paul had to say to people in Colossus. Um, who is the image of his invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. He's talking about Jesus. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Amen. Now, take a minute right there. They're not only created by him, but they were created for him. You think about all the ugliness and the things that happen to this world and the things that we don't understand. Listen. God's got it all in the palm of his hand. Yeah. Listen, when we think things is, is, is going out of control, and boy, this is it, and, and we, God knows. Nothing's caught God by surprise. All things that were created were created by him and for him. Verse 17 says, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Yeah. Wow. That, that this whole earth, everything that we see, everything that we, we can recognize around here, every single thing, every single thing got its birthplace. In the mind of God. Amen. And I think about this world and this planet. And, you know, the, uh, I heard somebody say the other day, and, and, and this just came to my mind, so I, I may blow it. Um, but, you know, if, if, if there was a big bang theory, uh, planets ought to spend a certain way around, you know, if they exploded from the sun or wherever they came from, these planets, they ought to be spinning in a certain direction. And, I, and, and all the planets turn that way except one of them. One of the planets turned the other way, which is completely against any scientific uh, re reasoning at all and several of the moons around different or uh, different planets spin the wrong way it, it, if, it, if it was a big bang where things exploded and flung off of something they ought to spin a certain way because that's science but they they spin the wrong way and they, they can't explain it so what they do they just they just look over it they just move on they got a lot of faith don't they you know, it takes a lot of faith to believe in, 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 in a lot of science stuff. I just believe that God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. I believe that God stepped out 
and said, here it is, and there it was. Uh, people say, well, you know, it's got to be this way. It's got no, it don't. The Bible says here, uh, he is before all things, and by him all things, all things exist. Amen. Everything. That, that's not so hard. Verse 18 goes on to say, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have, have the, the preeminence. Verse 19 says, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say whether they be things in the earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind. He's talking about the people of Coloss. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind. Because they were Gentiles. Uh, enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now hath he reconciled. Yeah. He's telling the Gentile people. He said, listen, you get to come in not because you're Jewish. You get to come in because Jesus died on the cross and paid the sin debt for every single person in the world. You get to be saved. It's not anything to do with, with what you, your name or, or, or who you were or what you were. Listen, it's about right now about you knowing him. He said, listen, you, you get to be saved because of Jesus. Where once you was alienated because you weren't a Jew, now you've been brought near. Listen, the age that we live is, is the greatest age. Because we get the gospel. Listen, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. We get to attend church. We get these gatherings where we don't have to ride on camels and go stay all week for... Listen, we, we're, we're the greatest time or the, or of the church age. We've got the most ways to reach people that's, that's ever been. We've got more ways than people's ever been able to reach other people with the gospel. And we need to make it... Listen, we need to make plans to reach as many people as we can as soon as we can the bible says again in verse 22 in the body of his flesh through death let me read verse 21 and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet hath he now reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and and unreprovable i like that word unreprovable in his sight meaning there's nothing that somebody's going to bring up down the road that you did when you were saved that's going to keep you out of heaven. You're unreprovable. They're not going to bring up anything, Brother Mike. They say, well, well, you remember that time that, that you, you had that bender that weekend. You supposedly saved, but that weekend you was all by yourself and you fell before God. Nobody knew it but you and them. Well, now, now, you, no, listen, unreprovable. Well, I'm thankful God saved me. Amen. But he didn't save me so I could go sin. Oh, don't get me wrong. He saved me. He saved me, and now that when I do sin, the Bible says if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me. I'm thankful. So now, as a, as a, with the gift, the treasure that we talked about this morning that's been poured into my earthen vessel, this cup, man, what, what a treasure that I have. And listen, I believe, I believe true Christians recognize that treasure, and, and they don't want to upset it. They want to mess it up. Oh, they fall sometimes? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The problem is there's a lot of people that I believe just not truly saved. They don't really see the they don't really see the the treasure in that earthen vessel that God placed there. Man, I, I I'm so amazed that I'm saved. I'm so amazed that at some point in the future I'm going to go to heaven, and and I I still sometimes struggle with if I sin, am, am I still going to be good enough? I know I am. I know what the Bible says, and I'm certain that I am. I grew up believing if I, if I went too far off, I could lose my salvation. Sometimes old devil rears his head and says, see, see. But I'm thankful today. That's what makes grace so beautiful. That, man, when I mess up, God, God loves me anyway. Just like a dear child. The Bible says I'm, I'm, a, I'm an adopted child. I brought into the family. I get adoption. I understand what that means. So when I think about that, I've been brought into the family. And, and, and I'm, I want to thank God for, for how good it feels to know that I'm going to heaven. Verse 24, let me read verse 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is beyond the affliction of Christ in my flesh for this, for this body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from, from generations but now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hey, you better be glad unless there's some Jews in here. 
You better be glad God extended that love towards us. Yeah. You better be glad. Uh, I don't know where my folks come from. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, I look around and, and people can, can, they can tell their, their, their DNA goes all the way back to here. Listen, my, I don't know where mine goes back to. Mine started 1969. As far as I know, what I do know is it's going to end up in glory. You know, I might be Jewish, don't even know it. I might have missed all these holidays. <laughs> don't even know. But what I do know is at some point in the future, I'm going to be with my Savior. Not because I'm a Jew, not because I was part of the right family, but because Jesus loved me and I accepted him as my Savior. And it's not based on how well I do it. It's based on how well Jesus did it, and he did it perfectly. Bible says in verse 28, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Amen. Paul said, I got a responsibility to you. I, I want to make sure that I present you, that I help you present your life perfect before God. You say, perfect? Better than I was yesterday as, as we get better. See, I think that, I think that, the, that the preaching of the word ought to be something that's not neglected in the church. I think that the preaching is very important. I think it's important that we hear God's word, that we hear it, that we align our lives with what the book says. And I believe that we get that from preaching, from God's man. Listen, I don't think I know everything, but I do know that I'm God's man for this place. So we need to hear God's man preach God's word out of God's book to God's people. We need to hear that Amen. because that changes us. That helps us be more like Christ. And it helps us to get ready to present ourselves before Christ Jesus. Some of you are going to be presenting yourself to Christ Jesus here for long. Well, I'm not, not just not referring to your age. But, but I, listen, I'm over halfway. People call this middle age. I'm not going to be 108. <laughs> so I'm closer home than I was where I started. So, so I, I, want, I want to present this before Jesus Christ. I want to present it, but I have a moral responsibility. I've got to help you present yours yeah. to Jesus Christ. That's what Paul said. He said, listen, I have a responsibility to you. Paul said, I've got a responsibility to teach you, to make sure you know. Verse 29 says, Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Meaning that Paul said, listen, i got something inside me that, that fires me up. Listen, the preaching of the gospel, for me personally, it, it and labor us. That's the payoff. You know, uh, the, the preaching time behind the pulpit, people say, ah, I, just, I was scared to death. Get, not me, buddy. Mm -mm. Uh, the preaching is kind of like football, Friday nights. But I hated practice. Hated practice. I kind of like uh, Allen Iverson. Practice. Practice. You know, you remember that Allen Iverson thing? Okay, y'all probably don't. Anyway, Allen Iverson hated practice. I hated practice. Man, I hated the, the sweat and being out there. It, it, it was all pointless to me. I wanted to get because I was a linebacker. I didn't need to know any plays. I didn't need to know who was running. I just tackled the man with the ball. And so, and that, so all I care about was Fridays. All I care about is Fridays. Listen, that's kind of like preaching. I like to study God's word. Man, I'd rather preach God's word. I know I got to study it, be able to preach it. Man, listen, I, I, there's, things that, there's things that are laborious in ministry. Preaching ain't one of them. Man, I love to preach God's word. My prayer is is that you find that thing in God's word that you love. Find that thing in God's work that you love so that God can bind you to it. Listen, you'll enjoy it. Yours might be holding doors. Yours might be teaching Sunday school. Listen, we need a children's church pastor. And, uh, I don't know what we're going to do, but we, we, we got to have more workers. And, and, and this y'all's people now. I'm, I'm just, I say it all the time, but this is y'all's. We need a children's church pastor, and I believe a wife. I, I'd like to see... It, my grand scheme of things, I'd like to see a husband and wife that that be their ministry, children's church, or maybe children's ministries. I have, I have no idea. But one of those things so that for our church time, those things can be taken care of because we have a great responsibility to teach those three to six-year-olds about Jesus. Yes. If, if we can start imprinting on their little minds and hearts now this book and the importance of it and about Jesus, listen, it'll make it easier when they go into Sunday schools. They need to start memorizing Scripture. They need to start memorizing what the Bible says and hearing this over and over by their teachers. I think it's important. But that's, that's what we're all called to do. There's, there's a thousand years worth of work we need to do in the next four or five around here. 
there's things that need to be done um, because these kids, they grow up and they're gone, and we, we miss opportunities with them. Bree's about gone, grown. I mean, not really, but in five years, you know, we got just a few years to, to impress on these children's hearts. And I don't want to look at any of them and say, well, we can wait three or four years and then we'll, no, 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 no. I'll do it now. I'll do it now. So we got to make sure we're reaching out to these little fellas, make sure they're getting it. So there's some people we need in some places. We need a, we need a, a teacher, an adult, a, a husband, or a wife, or both, to teach in a, uh, a couple's class, kind of middle age, somewhere right there, maybe 30s, 40s, early. We need somebody to teach right in there. But the last guy's hands full over here with the groups he's doing. I'm not even sure what ages you're doing over anymore. But we need somebody right above yours and right below yours. We need another class. We just need some more people involved teaching. That's what the work happens. That's where the work comes. And, and Paul's telling the people of Coloss, wait, Jesus is everything. Don't put everything, anything above Jesus. Make sure, make sure he's the focus of everything. If we do that, I believe we're going to keep everything right here at our church. But don't make it about us. And don't make it about buildings, which I'd be glad to have a building just so we can do more ministry. But let's don't make it about buildings. Let's don't make it about anything but Jesus. Amen. Keep him first. And man, I can't wait to see what he's going to do with this building. But Johnny, I, feel, I just feel something happening right here with this. And I'm, I'm looking forward to what God's going to do. And I believe it's going to be another testimony for us about how God did some great things here at our church. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and thank you for this time together. God, for the people that come out tonight, I'm so thankful, God, that um, they sacrificed this evening, Lord. I, I, it's a beautiful day out, and I know a lot of people had a lot of things they'd rather be doing. But God, there's some people that come here tonight, Lord, to hear your word. And I pray, God, that you uh, had it so that their ears could hear it. Lord, I, I pray you always open my mouth, and I pray you always lead me. God, this didn't work for me. I just thank you, God. If you give me a place to preach your word, Lord, we get to, we get to talk about the greats like Paul and Epaphras and uh, Philemon, Onesimus. We get to talk about some of these people that were pinned down in Scripture, and, and we get to shout it from the mountaintops. Lord, let us not grow weary in that. God, I pray that tonight, if there's somebody here, Lord, who, who, who seems to be struggling or, or, maybe, or maybe just wants to exalt you in your great holiness, Lord, I pray they do it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would, please stand. If you'd like to come and pray, please do. A good day today. Um, got to see Hunter's new house. Amen. Eat up some of his stuff. And, uh, just been a good day. A good day got in God's house. And, uh, this past week, uh, Miss Lily, she came to join the church today. What a blessing. Her mom was here with her today. So just been a good day. Some of y'all may not know the victories that's happened around that right there. 
But uh, just know that, boy, God is sure showing off right there. Uh, anybody have anything to say before we dismiss? If not, Jonathan, would you dismiss us?